Happy Sabbath. We welcome you to our first lesson for the year 2021. We are looking at a very exciting lesson. And you can see with me, we are looking at a heavenly message in the book of Daniel. Heavenly messages in the book of uh, Daniel. And there are many lessons that are embedded in uh, the book of Daniel. And you can see uh, it's a very exciting lesson. And out there where you are, if you're within Zambia, um, within Lusaka or nearby the University of Zambia, we'll be very glad to actually give you a copy if you're interested in learning more about the messages that are embedded in the book of Daniel. We are actually living in a very uh, perilous moments and moments which are fulfilling some of the prophecies which we are foretold in the book of Daniel. So we are hoping that you can be with us throughout the course of the first half of 2021 as we'll be looking at the heavenly messages that are embedded in the book of Daniel. And as we start, I would love to mention that you are most welcome to join us on our YouTube channel and also on our uh, Facebook uh, group page. Please do join us and you, are, you, can, you can join us and ask any question and discuss with us various topics that pertain to uh, our salvation. Today's lesson is titled, The Prophetic Word is a Light. The Prophetic Word is a Light. We are living in times where there are a lot of prophets and prophecies. And here we are being told that actually, prophets in the time that we are living in is actually light so that we don't walk in darkness. Uh, with me, I'm with uh, Brother Blessings. He is actually our missionary leader. He is leading the missionary department at the Invest Campus Fellowship. And I'm um, your brother, Manoam Changa. So we are hoping that you can be with us as we continue to uh, learn from one another about the wonderful word of God. So the introduction says from 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. This is the introductory text that we are uh, given uh, based on this uh, topic, the prophetic word is light. So, any comment, brother, blessings? Uh, thank you very much, audience, wherever you are watching for, uh, us from. Uh, this introductory word is indeed giving us uh, the, the, the light upon which he, the word is going to be discussed. Indeed, we have seen that uh, this word, the, the word of prophecy, it's a, the word that can only be given to the people of God to understand. And it is sure that it is enough for the people to be able to understand the truth. And it is able to guide them into the whole truth. If at all they only be ab able to abide by this word of truth. It is only able also to shine unto them, to give them guidance into uh, their pathways as they travel in this life's journey. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you very much, brother. So actually, we are told that it's a, it's a sure word. That means it's a, it's a profound word. That means once we believe in what the Lord has spoken through his prophets, we are more than safe. We are built, uh, we are built on a, a sure foundation that we cannot be moved by or be swayed by false prophecies that are being propagated across the world. And we are told that whoever actually desires the sure word of prophecy, desires a good thing because you'll be kept uh, from the deceptions that are going on. And it's like a lamp, a torch that is going to guide your eyes so that you don't stumble. So we're going to the main lesson. Uh, the first question, what did the Lord do so as not to leave his children in uncertainty? Through whom did he speak to mankind? We have uh, Genesis chapter 18, verse 17, it says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets through his servants, the prophets. And 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 9 says, Before time in Israel, 
When a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Today we have seer 10 or seer 3, and there are many other seers that are self acclaimed. But here we have been told that actually a seer is a very honorable term. Actually, every prophet of our time used to be called a seer. Now, when you get back to the uh, question, what did the Lord do so as not to leave his children in uncertainty? He revealed his secrets. Through who? Through his servants. Yes. So he revealed his secrets through his servants so that his people could not be left in uncertainty. You can imagine God has communicated, some, uh, communicated something and it's not clarified. Or it is just based on to God, it will be a problem. People will be doubting what will happen tomorrow or next week or next month or the next 10 years what will happen so the lord reveals through his servants the prophets in the world that you're living in there's so much deception but that deception is for those who don't want to uh, hear this sure word of uh, prophecy let's go to question number two brother blessings is going to uh, answer this question uh, under the subheading guidelines for god's people what is important for us to do immediately when god speaks when the Lord speaks through his servants, what are we supposed to do immediately? Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 10 says, And the Lord came and stood and called us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak. For thy servant heareth. Let's get back to the question. What is important for us to do immediately when God speaks? Brother Blessings. Yes, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, whenever God speaks to us, we need to answer as quickly as possible to his call. And say, speak for thy servant heareth. Yes, just like, like Samuel. Yes. When he was called, he was not asked, who are you? Or what should I do? He said, Lord, speak, your servant is hearing. So even today, God is calling uh, uh, us into his service. We should not start asking, so how will I, go in, how, how will I do it? Uh, how am I going to get there? Just go and God will start training you one day at a time. And before you realize it, you find that you become an expert in the field which you thought you are not able to do. Because God has given us various um, capabilities. So we need to listen and then ask for his direction and we need to have full uh, childlike trust and faith and confidence in the spoken word that comes from the mouth of God. That's what we learned from question number three, I mean number two. And under question number three, under the subheading uh, that I already mentioned, uh, is a question, what counsel did the Apostle Peter give so one may benefit from the precious light of prophecy so there's a certain counsel which uh, the apostle peter gave to all of us and the people who lived during his time 2 peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 says we have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto he do well that he take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts this is the, the, the first text that we read when we started the lesson. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's what we are told here. Now, getting back to the question. What counsel did the Apostle Peter give so one may benefit from the precious light of prophecy? Yes, uh, thank you, brother. Indeed, we have been told that we need to obey this word of prophecy whenever it is presented unto us. That is the counsel that has been given to us because this word of prophecy uh, comes because God has inspired it that it should be likewise be given to us. Yes, brother. Thank you very much. Yes, just to add on that, brother. So here we have seen that uh, whenever we hear someone prophesying, 
it is something that we are able to verify from the scripture. Yes. If there is a prophecy in Daniel and it's not so clear, there must be another prophetic book within the Bible that should clarify that. So no one would tell you that uh, that means this or this means ABCD yes. without referring to the scripture. So there is no private interpretation of a prophecy in the Bible. Why? Because it is meant to guide us as we learned from the first question. Yes. God has revealed these things so that we may not stumble and we can be certain of the things that are coming. Today we are able to see uh, so many prophecies that were prophesied by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24 about the knowledge shall increase. Today there is yes. so much knowledge that has increased and even in the past pestilences we are, yes. we are struggling with COVID-19. There are so many other diseases, disasters and so on and so forth which are happening because Christ had already uh, foretold that they will happen as a token to show us that he is near uh, by his second coming. So God has revealed these things so that we are not uh, led astray. And we should always remember that no human being should give you any imagined prophecy because all, all the prophets, starting from John going downwards up to Moses, they spoke according to how God directed them so no one is going to give you his own imagination that's the word which the lord has not spoken yes so let's let's go to question number uh, four and it says under the subheading the most essential light who alone knows and is able to foretell the future to whom are a great number of wonderful prophecies addressed uh, we are reading from um, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21 to 23 says, Produce your cause, save the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons, save the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us that, I mean, and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, what we may, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them. Or declare us things to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that you are gods. Ye do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 12 also says that of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied. Of the grace, <coughs> excuse me, that should come unto you, searching what or what man of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, and to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. These are the words which are coming from the two scriptures. So here we are told who alone knows and is able to foretell uh, the future. We are told that uh, it is actually God and he speaks through his uh, appointed and anointed prophets they are the only ones who are able to see what is happening in the future so god alone knows what is in the future and that's why in isaiah chapter 4 verse 21 to 23 we are being given a challenge isaiah is giving a challenge to whoever is claiming the same prophet said tell us what happened in the past tell us what will happen in the future so that we prove whether you are a god or not so only god knows what will happen in the future so he will not come speak to us directly but he will use fellow mortals to speak to us the secrets that belong to God. And uh, let us remember that God does not use uh, human beings as prophets who break his commandments. He always calls his servants who appreciate, who are obedient to the commandments of God. Let's go to question uh, number five. What prophetic book of the Old Testament contains the most exact information in regard to the time of the end. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. 
many shall run to and from and knowledge shall be increased so here we are told that actually uh, uh, the book that actually reveals the things which are happening now is the book of daniel and more especially i like the prophecy in chapter 2 of daniel which summarizes everything up to the time that we are living in since there's about 600 bc it has revealed everything coming all the way up to the end of time so daniel is a book is the most profound book that is revealing uh the, the the exact information regarding the time of the end let's go to question number six so let's go to question number six under the subheading the seal of confirmation on bible prophecy so we all understand that for something to be fully established and be uh, uh, widely accepted it should have some form of confirmation so who imprinted the divine seal on the book of daniel matthew 24 verse 15 says when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whosoever readeth let him understand mark chapter 13 verse 14 says but when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet standing where it ought not let him that readeth understand then let them that be in judea flee to the mountain getting back to the question who imprinted the divine seal on the book of Daniel? Brother Blessings. Yes, from the scripture we are told that this is Jesus Christ who imprinted this because it is him that is able to, that was able rather to give to Daniel to seal this, uh, this scroll of the things to come. Yes, Ab absolutely, indeed. absolutely. So basically this seal is like more or less like a signature. Yes. Yes, so it is Jesus Christ that has an had put the signature on the book of Daniel and all other prophecies in the Bible. So when you hear someone is prophesying today, you should be able to ask the question, where is the signature of Christ in what this person is prophesying? Yes. I'll give you an example. If someone is prophesying who is going to win football, yes. you have to ask yourself, is Jesus Christ able to put his signature in football? The answer is outrightly no. Jesus Christ is not there in football. So if someone is prophesying about football, who is going to win, you should know that that person is uh, prophesying out of his own imagination or using his own enchantment uh, capabilities, not, be, not out of the instruction from Jesus Christ. So every prophecy must bear the signet of heaven, the signature of Jesus Christ. That's when we can safely say, yes, this is the prophecy that we need to uh, listen to not every way of prophecy should actually be uh, hidden because there are a lot of prophecies today that are as a result of the imaginations of fellow human beings question number seven as we close the lesson what is reported about daniel as a person so when you read from daniel chapter one verse three to six we learned that uh, it was a prince of judah uh, someone who was well instructed from childhood by his parents. You can see the uh, importance of home influence. Children must be well trained such that even if they are taken into uh, foreign places, places outside their homes, they will still stand by that which you had already what? planted in their minds. So this Daniel, during the time when uh, Judah was taken captive, Israel was taken captive, was also taken there into Babylon. But because of uh, the good lesson that he received uh, during his childhood, he maintained integrity, he maintained purity of character, and he represented God in Babylon, in a foreign land, such that God revealed so many things, and he revealed his power through him as his chosen servant. And he was basically uh, trusted, uh, he trusted in God, this Daniel. So even us today, if that is to work through us, we need to have an upright character. We need to have discipline. Yes. We need to trust in God. Then God can do more through us. It's not by mighty or our own imagination or intelligence, but by the Spirit of God. 
the spirit of God is what is going to activate our intelligence, our capabilities, in order to do that which is uh, acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God. Uh, we are hoping that uh, you have uh, benefited from today's lesson. Don't forget uh, the title for the entire first semester or the first six months of 2021. We are looking at the heavenly messages in the book of Daniel. So do stay with us from now onwards up to June. We have a lot of profound lessons to learn. And please, if you have just joined us along the way, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be posting a lot of exciting lessons. And also you can join us on our WhatsApp group, uh, uh, International Missionary Society, University Campus Fellowship. We are there on WhatsApp and I mean on Facebook. We'll be very glad to welcome you to our group so that we can continue to digest more and to reflect more about the love of Jesus Christ. May the good Lord bless you and keep you wherever you are. And let us remember that the sure weight of prophecy is like a torch into our lives so that we may not be laid astray by the false prophets that are prevailing in our days. May God bless you and bye-bye.